Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus today. I am Trace, and this is episode one of five in our new series on volcanoes. I think you're gonna like it. It's explosive. It's exciting. There's magma. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna talk about what volcanoes are. We're gonna talk about whether they're good or bad for the planet. We're gonna talk about volcanoes in space. It's gonna be super sweet. Make sure you check us out over on iTunes as well. You can find an audio version of this whole thing. You can also subscribe right here on YouTube, so make sure you do that. If you haven't clicked the little subscribe button, get down there. Get down there and click it. It's right there. It's great. You can also come find the show on Twitter at TestTube. You can find me at Trace Dominguez. Volcanoes. Let's talk about them. When I say a volcano, which I've said like four times already, an image probably pops into your head, right? A mountain spewing hot red and orange lava. Or, you know, maybe you think of a model volcano that you made when you were in middle school spewing baking soda all over the kitchen. I definitely did that. Both are technically correct, I guess, but the term volcano can actually mean a number of different things. But I love space and I am, you know, I am me, so let's look at NASA's definition of what a volcano is, right? A volcano is, quote, an opening on the surface of a planet or moon that allows material warmer than its surroundings to escape from the interior. And it's not always that cliche movie mountain that you've pictured in your head, right? Like the classic movie Dante's Peak slash volcano that came out in the same summer. What was up with that? Sure, those things are volcanoes, specifically composite volcanoes, so like Mount Rainier, Mount Fuji, Mount St. Helens, those are composite volcanoes, steep-sided cones rising thousands of feet in the air. Those volcanoes, the famous ones, they're very pretty, they start as a conduit. It's a natural pipe, right? Through the Earth's crust, it's tapped into an underground reservoir of hot magma. When the magma erupts or comes out of the pipe, it starts to form layers around the conduit. The layers are made of lava, which is magma outside. We'll come back to that. Ash, rock, pyroclastic flows, which are super cool. And this happens over thousands upon thousands of years. That magma is erupting out as lava, and it's building and building and building and building. And over multiple eruptions, you end up with this giant cone-like mountain with a large crater on the top that you can get a helicopter tour of. And they've produced some of the deadliest eruptions in the world but they also have numerous vents on the side where magma can escape from. And sometimes the magma gets so thick inside the volcano, it gets blocked up and it explodes like a giant zit on the face of the earth. And actually that might be my favorite kind of explosion because it's pretty crazy. I mean, it's destructive and deadly in Mount St. Helens, and but also, wow, super awesome, earth is it. I mean, that's great. Then there's the cinder cone volcano. It's a different type of volcano altogether. It's similar to a composite volcano, but instead of a mountain, it's more like a hill, like little hills. And like the name says, it's, you know, it's cone-shaped, cinder cone volcano, but it's more rounded than the composite versions. The eruption comes from a single vent just at the top. It blows lava violently into the air, and eventually that breaks apart, cools, comes back down as cinders, and that forms a volcano. Boom, cinder volcano. Next are shield volcanoes. These ones are super cool. I don't know if you knew there were so many different kinds of volcanoes. There are. Bear with me. The shield volcano is created by a lava flow as well. But after an eruption from the top vent, the lava just kind of spills down, kind of oozes out on all sides, gently creating these sloping sides. Just because it's a shield volcano doesn't mean it has anything to do with Captain America, but just picture Captain America's shield, because that's what it looks like, kind of like a shield. And you can't really have a steep pile of fluid. I mean, the lava is just going to ooze out, right? Try, try making this pile of fluid. It wouldn't work. The largest active volcano in the world is actually a shield volcano. It's Mauna Loa in Hawaii, and it's over 13,000 feet above sea level. It's pretty tall. But... Above sea level is only some of it. It's you know like an iceberg, right? But it's a volcano. It's cooler. Uh, actually, it's warmer. Let's not get into it. But it keeps going down to the ocean floor below sea level, another 16,000 feet. On top of that, Mauna Loa is in a depressed part of the sea floor. So it's an inverted cone that goes down another 26,000 feet. So technically, ML, that baby is 56,000 feet high. It's also 60 miles long, 30 miles wide. No big deal. That stuff is sweet. 
So those are the three main types of volcanoes, but there are other kinds, but those are the three main ones. Uh, there are volcanoes and volcano byproducts as well. For example, Crater Lake in the United States, that's a caldera. It's created when a volcano's magma chamber below it, the thing that it gets its you know lava from, is emptied, so the volcano ends up collapsing on itself. There are mud volcanoes, which just sound messy because that's what they are. They sound, you know, it's what they are. They're mud volcanoes. There are super volcanoes, which is what's under Yellowstone, which is also what they sound like. And it's, you know, a volcano that can erupt with the force thousands of times more powerful than a regular sissy volcano. There are underwater volcanoes that are like super awesome. There are subglacial volcanoes. There are all volcanoes on other planets and cryo volcanoes. We're going to get to some of these later. So if all of these volcanoes are made up of essentially, we'll call them eruption products, what exactly are those? Magma and lava, two things we've mentioned so far. The difference between the two is actually relatively easy. Magma is molten rock beneath the Earth's surface. Molten rock, liquid rock. Lava is molten rock above the Earth's surface. Boom, difference between lava and magma. When it solidifies, it becomes igneous rock, which is, you know, volcanic rock, also known as obsidian or dragon glass. If you watch Game of Thrones, go Sam the Slayer. Kill those white walkers. We all know the deeper that we get into the earth, the hotter it gets. There's more pressure, and the pressure and temperature are intimately related. But as the pressure gets higher, that raises not only the temperature, but also the melting temperature of the rock itself. So think about it this way. It's easier to boil water on top of a mountain than it is to boil water in the Dead Sea because the air pressure keeps the water from boiling at a lower temperature. It's the same with rock. The more pressure you put on something, the harder it is to get it to boil. So the molten rock, or melted rock, happens not too far below the Earth's surface. It forms around the upper portion of the mantle and the lower part of the Earth's crust. Magma is created because of three main reasons. An increase in temperature, a decrease in pressure, or the addition of water. Rocks melting from high temperatures, you know, that's obvious. That's part of what creates magma. It's melting because it's so pressurized, because it's underneath the crust. There's a lot of stuff floating on it. We're all kind of heavy, not as heavy as all the rock between us and that, but that's fine. When solid unmelted rocks are pushed upwards towards the surface, it's now in a lower pressure environment and it suddenly lowers the melting point. Remember what I said before, it's moving up lower pressure. That means lower temperature required to get it to boil and boom, the rock becomes molten. When water is introduced, that also lowers the melting point, which is now, if you think about it, the same idea as lower pressure. Water lowers the melting point. Because the melting point is lower, it melts more easily, and it's already under a huge amount of pressure because it's in the inside of the earth. But the reason why rocks are introduced to hot, less pressurized water, that's a whole different thing, and it's actually really, really cool. The earth, or the crust of the earth anyway, is floating on the mantle. The mantle holds up the crust, and the crust is made of a bunch of plates called tectonic plates. You probably learned about this in middle school. So when tectonic plates move apart, rock from the mantle moves up into that void, and because the pressure is so much lower, it instantly becomes molten rock. It becomes less dense and melts. Or sometimes tectonic plates crash together creating friction and extra heat. That can also cause that, again, pressure and temperature. And when two tectonic plates collide, there's another force involved, and that's the ocean. If an oceanic plate hits a continental plate, the oceanic plate will go underneath it, creating a subduction zone, introducing water into the solid rock and lowering its temperature, but they're still under a lot of pressure, so boom, again, magma. Of course, all of this stuff, super simplified. And if it sounds complicated, it's because it's really, really complicated. And producer Brian had a huge problem trying to figure all this out. So thank you so much. You can tweet at him if it's wrong, because it was all on him. I take no part of that. <laughs> but he had a huge problem getting all of this information. So hopefully we got it right. But some scientists can actually create this magma in their labs because they want to better understand it. It's very difficult to study because it's inside of the Earth, and we have trouble digging into the Earth, especially down to the levels that magma are going to come into play. So what they've done at this university in Alaska is they take volcanic rock, they smash it into a powder, they add water and some other stuff, and then they heat it up. It gets super hot, 
then they let it cool, and what they're left with is another volcanic rock, exactly what they started out with. So what ends up happening is they're experimenting to try and create magma, not under the earth, you know, in the lab. Magma is awesome. I mean, it's fun to say, for one, but it's also awesome. Volcanoes are awesome. I could talk about the origins of magma and volcanoes and how they have affected our planet all day, and to be honest, I actually will talk about some of those things. If you subscribe to Test2+, Plus, you won't miss them. We have to move on. There's awesome stuff that we need to cover. Like, why is it that volcanoes erupt in the first place? And what do we do when that happens? How can we predict that? Subscribe so you get the next episode of Test Tube Plus tomorrow. What are your experiences with volcanoes? Have you ever seen one go off? I was in Guatemala last January, and one of these volcanoes just started puffing. And I was freaking out, and all the people there were just like, don't worry about it, buddy. Come on, man. It's fine. It's no big deal. Have you ever been around an eruption? Tell us about it in the comments. And also, you can find us on Twitter, at Test Tube. You can find me, at Trace Dominguez, uh, if you want to see a picture of that volcano, check out my Instagram. It's at Trace501. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Test Tube Plus. Yeah.